Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create a high availability pair of Big IP Virtual Edition instances in Microsoft Azure. When I'm done, I'll have an active standby pair of Big IP VEs. To start, I'll go to the F5 Network's GitHub repository. Under F5 Azure ARM Templates, Supported, HA, there are two options. You can deploy into an existing stack when you already have your subnets and IP addresses defined. But I just want to see how this works, so I'm going to deploy a fully new stack. I'm going to scroll down to the Deploy button. And if I have a trial or production license from F5, I can use BYOL, Bring Your Own License. Um, and I'll put a link on YouTube for how to get a trial license. But in this case, I'm going to use Pay As You Go. So I click Deploy, and the template opens in the Azure portal. Now I just need to fill it out. I'm going to create a new resource group and set a password for my big IP VEs. The DNS label is used as part of the URL. Uh, the instance name is just the name of the VM in Azure. The instance type determines how much memory and CPU you'll have. The image name determines how many modules you can run. Those are F5 modules. I'm just going to use good. I'm going to choose the latest Big IP VE version, which in this case is 13.0.021. Uh, the bandwidth determines the maximum throughput of the traffic that's going through Big IP. The number of external IP addresses. I'm just going to start with one, and you can always add more later. Basically, if you're going to add, um, if you're going to run more than one application behind the Big IP, you need to increase this number. But for now, I just have one app server that I'm testing with. Uh, the VNet address prefix is for the address ranges of your subnet, so I'm going to leave the default. And then these next three fields have to do with security. Uh, basically, rather than using your own credentials uh, to modify resources in Azure, you're going to create an active directory application and assign permissions to it. But this is a bit new to me as well. Just look at the readme file. Um, and also, Azure has documentation. Just look for service principle. Um, I have this information already ready, so I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, and then these next two fields also go together. Uh, manage routes let you route traffic from other external networks through the big IPs. So let me just fill these in and then I'll explain. Um, I'm going to put this in the manage routes field and this in the tag field. Now anytime this tag is found in the route table, routes that have this destination are updated so that the next hop is the IP address of the active big IP VE. So this might be useful if you want all outbound traffic to go through the big IP, um, or if you want to send traffic from a bunch of different VNets through your big IP. Um, and then I'm just going to leave the rest as defaults. Um, I could, the restricted source address is a good way to um, just put IP addresses on my network. Those are the ones that are allowed to connect to the big IP. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave the default. And I agree to terms and deploy. Then I like to click this little bell to watch the progress of the deployment. Uh, this is going to take about 15 minutes, so I'm just going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, it's finished and now I can go look at all the resources in my resource group. Um, I want to show you specifically where the virtual server address is. Um, this is going to be associated with one of the external NICs. So let's look at these NICs. They have EXT in the name and basically if you look at the IP configurations for these NICs, whenever the NIC has two IP addresses, that's the active big IP. Um, the primary address you see here is the big IP self IP, and then the secondary address is the virtual server address. So um, if you look at the other external NIC, you'll see that it only has one self IP, and that's the primary. It doesn't have this secondary virtual server address. So basically, the virtual server address is assigned to the active big IP. And when I force the active big IP to standby, the virtual server address is reassigned from one NIC to the other. So let me just log in a big IP and show you how this works. So I log in to each big IP here. And then on the active big IP, I'm going to force it to standby. And then you can see that the other big IP becomes active. Now let's go back into Azure, and you can see that the IP address is no longer associated with this external NIC. And if you just wait a few minutes, you'll see that the IP address is now associated with the other NIC. That's basically how HA in the cloud works, by reassigning the virtual server address from one big IP to the other. If you need more details on this solution, check out the README on GitHub, 
or if you join our Slack channel at f5cloudsolutions.slack.com, uh, you can post questions there and our devs will be looking at it. Thanks for listening and have a great day.